about to let Jordan Love start against the Bears because you know he'll do good. Yeah. Right. right. So you saw you what Mike White wait, wait, did. Stop. To him. Wait, hang on for a second. You think Aaron Rodgers is legit worried about Jordan Love? Like uh, not like that though. Okay. It, the, right. it, it'll be like the court of public opinion. Yeah. Because he'll go. Because look, I mean, look. Zach Wilson, we're in remembrance of him yeah, yeah, because exactly. Mike White went out there. You get that on the discount rack? <laughs> you didn't pay full price two, for that, two right? $2, like his jersey <laughs> number. Oh, my God. <laughs>
it's Bryce Perkins because at least he caught a touchdown with him. I'm shaking in my boots if somehow Baker Mayfield find himself in that game. There is talk that maybe he starts this week. I don't think that happens. They're the Thursday night game against the Raiders. Again, we're ta- we're shooting this. This is Wednesday at uh, at 12.05 p.m. Eastern. So stranger things have happened in the NFL. I don't think it's a bad move by the Rams, by the way. I'll just, from, from a pure NFL standpoint, this is a guy who's a former first-round NFL talent. This is somebody who has had success in the NFL level. It has been a little while. I grant that. But if... You know, it's basically a free look. He's not that expensive. Like, I think something like they have to pay a million and a half on his contract yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Like, so with Matthew Stafford, I mean, like, would it shock anyone at this table if Matthew Stafford retires this offseason? It wouldn't for me. No, he's got the Super Bowl ring. He's so beat up. Like, we know he's a big family man. Like, it would not shock me at all. Matthew Stafford's, what, 35? Like, if, yeah. I'm not saying I have no inside knowledge. I'm just saying, like, that would not surprise me if we've seen Matthew Stafford play his last game of football. And so it, here's a free look at a quarterback that might be a solution yep. because the Rams have traded all their picks. You know what I mean? Like it's anyway. So <clears throat> I, I don't mind the move for the Rams. I think fantasy wise, I don't think there's anyone on the Rams that you want to trust this week other than maybe do you want to try to you hope Cam Akers builds on the success That's from somebody. last week. You know, it is a good matchup with, with Vegas, but you know, Baker Mayfield, I don't think at the moment has any fantasy relevance for himself or any Ram. No, I believe in Baker Mayfield, just not behind this offensive line, not with those skill position players. We'll see what happens next year. A more relevant quarterback is Lamar Jackson, though you might not really know it with his stat lines of late, but he has a sprained PCL. That's been confirmed. He is unlikely for week 14. It looks like maybe the week after, maybe the week after that, we'll see. Lawrence, what do you think the Ravens offense looks like under Tyler Huntley? Yeah, so like last year when Tyler Huntley had to play, it's eerily similar because Lamar Jackson left last year when they was 8-4 and four as well. It'll be similar, just just a tad bit less explosiveness uh, when it comes to the uh, quarterback running. We do know that people love, if you uh, if you have Mark Andrews in fantasy, you love Tyler Huntley because he, cause he actually took a step up. However, for this week versus the Steelers, where the Steelers are favored by yeah. two and a half points, and the over-under is 37. I don't know how much I love anything about it for this week. I think that's fair. I, I think, again, in a, in a week in which, you know, you, uh, you're without Justin Fields, um, in a week in which you're going to be out without Lamar Jackson, uh, you know, that you may be desperate. You may need a quarterback. You may have been playing some, some uh, quarterback roulette. Some people, you know, deeper leagues, people were using – Rodgers and Heineke and Marcus Mariota. Uh, Marcus Mariota to an extent, right? So so you might need a guy here. I, I'm at QB 14. I think yeah, he's a yeah. mid-tier QB 2. Right. I, I think this is a low-scoring game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? I always think these are just sort of this, – this is one of the, the, the uh, typical, you know, throw out the records, everything like that. Yes, it's two teams yes. that do not like each other. The no runners, love lost. Right. And by the way, and, and Vegas agrees, it's the bet MGM, the line is 37. So we're expecting not a lot of fantasy points or even NFL points in this game. Having said that, it, he's played six games over the last two years with over where he's played over 50% of the snaps. Some games where he started, some games where he's come right. in and played the majority of them. And in those games, he's had over 40 yards rushing in all six of them. He's averaging 54 uh, rushing yards. And so especially given T.J. Watt, could you? See, they'll have some design runs for Tyler Huntley, but what you'll also see is him scrambling a little bit. He's not scared to, if he's feeling pressure, to duck it under and use his legs. He's he's a he's a good match. Like they don't have to adjust their offense that much. Right. Like he's a really good backup for Lamar Jackson. And so for me, to the extent we care about the Ravens, I think he's a viable QB two streamer this week. I'm not worried about Mark Andrews, who averaged over 20 fantasy points per game in Huntley's four starts last season. He should get his. And I don't think you really want any other Ravens player. We'll see if J.K. Dobbins is active. We'll talk about that on Fantasy Football pregame and what that means. But, you know, you don't feel good about this run game, especially after what we saw last week and going against Pittsburgh. Yep. You're feeling better about the Raiders' offense, though. And Darren Waller, who's been dealing with a hamstring, is on track to come off IR this week on Thursday night against the Rams. Matthew, I, I mean, he has to be picked up if he's available in any league. He's available right now, apparently, in 30% of Yahoo leagues. Yeah, which... maybe people like sort of thinking he was out for the year or, or sick of it. Yeah. Absolutely, you need to pick him up. If he, it, he, It's unlikely that he plays Thursday night, but he's on track to potentially return the week after. 
and 100% like he absolutely needs to be rostered in every league. Like, I think you could say, you could make the argument like, all right, hey man, he's no longer in the, the he was never in the Kelsey Andrews tier, but he was sort of in that, the next, the yeah. Hawkinson, uh, you know, Kittle, uh, you know, uh, Fryermuth, you know, um, uh, that sort of tier, that the next tier under, under uh, Kelsey and Andrews. And so he's, you could argue he's no longer in that tier. Okay, fine. But we know he's super talented. And so if you're getting into a tier beyond that, then it's just like, all right, well, now you just want a tight end with a pulse that has a shot at a touchdown. Right. And who's got a, who's got a pulse and a shot at a touchdown better than Darren Waller? So, uh, you know, even though if his first game back is week one, week 15, the first week of the playoffs, you maybe not feel great about starting him. But if, you're, if you don't have a solution at tight end, yeah. you don't have one of the elite guys, and you're just sort of like, I'm hoping for a touchdown, you know, then like, okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's right. as good a dice roll as anyone. Or if you're somebody like me who drafted Kyle Pitts in every league and you've been scrambling the past few weeks, you picking them up. If the guys you mentioned, Fryer Muth, Dalton Schultz, yep. TJ Hawkinson, if I have those guys and Darren Waller's like questionable, 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 then I'm not – I'm not even I'm not even picking them up if I had those guys. Well, I don't mind picking them up and keeping them from somebody else too. Like sometimes the best <clears throat> offense is a good defense. Like just because you pick him up doesn't mean you have to use him. Yep. You know what I mean? But there's a chance, and I don't know what percentage it is, but there's a chance he comes back and he's Darren Waller. You know yes, what I mean? And right. so like this is a team that's throwing a lot, given how well they're running the ball with Josh Jacobs. Like that'll set up some, you know, that'll set up play action as well. Obviously, Devontae Adams is just absolutely eating, and so. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, hey, look, they need him. They, they definitely need him. They, they, they definitely need him. And so, uh, for me, Darren Waller, you know, it's been a tough year for him, no question about it. But the upside about him is it's absolutely worth making sure he's rostered. And then we'll talk about whether you start him or where he comes into the ranks when and if next we know week, he's playing. Yeah. Doesn't look like he's playing this week, but I do think next week is very viable. Yep. Okay, let's move on to Seattle. And we're going to talk about Wayne Goldman. Uh, which I wasn't expecting uh, at any point during the season. But the Seahawks did sign Wayne Gorman to their practice squad. Kenneth Walker is banged up. DJ Dallas is banged up. I mean, uh, this Travis is the issue. Travis Comer was inactive last week. Yeah. He practiced once, and then, you know, it was like he's not going to go. The issue is, is like, we don't know who the signing is for. Is it because Ken Walker's going to miss? Is it because DJ Dallas is going to miss? Is it because both is going to miss? <laughs> like, they, we just don't know. They just need depth. Yeah. They've got Tony Jones, the, the former Saint, on yes. the roster. But, like... Tony Jones could get anywhere from 20 touches to zero yeah. in this game on <laughs> right. Sunday, and it wouldn't surprise me. The, the, uh, the frustrating thing here on Seattle, right, is that they play the Carolina Panthers. They're home to the Carolina. It's a bottom 12 run defense yes. over the last month. Again, they've been up and down. It's skewed by that crazy Bengals game. But yep. still, like the Seahawks have, for much of the year, had a pretty good, efficient pa- run game. And so – in a week in which six running backs are on a bye, in a week in which you've got no Patterson, no David Montgomery, no Aaron Jones, no Jonathan Taylor, no Kamara, no Brian Robinson or Antonio Gibson, Ooh. right? I mean, like, it's an ugly week and potentially no Ken Walker. Like, this is suddenly, like, there's fantasy value potentially be had here. And so, um, but it's just, I, you know, listen, I don't mind taking a stab. I picked up DJ Dallas in a couple leagues where he was available. I picked up Travis Homer in the leagues where DJ Dallas wasn't, just to sort of yeah. see, you know, like, because you never know. But, um, and it's worth noting because there's also a chance that Wayne Gallman freaking starts for them or gets yes. run it's this terrible. Sunday. And, and, and what everything you're talking about just makes it a whole mosh pit as to why you really can't fit. Because you could have three guys active, a certain two that's not, and it's just something. You don't want to mess with it if you don't have to. That's right. But I think as we get closer to Sunday, I think we'll have a better yeah, idea. Sure. Yeah. We'll see the practice reports throughout the week, who's practicing, who's not, who's in full. Seattle, there's a couple of beat writers that do a really good job of covering the Seahawks. And so I think we'll have, as we approach Sunday, I think we'll have a better chance, better idea of what this backfield is going to look like. But more importantly, I'm just saying, as you sit here today, I don't mind <clears> – <throat> I don't mind taking a uh, a dart throw or two on one of these guys in case, because one of them may pay off this Sunday. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. We're going to go to break. When we come back, keep it open or we'll close it out. We'll talk about who benefits most <coughs> from the great Brock Purdy uh, starting. I'm not sick. I just sound awful. <laughs> it's so annoying.
Brock came in and made some big plays. Um, and he plays, he's got some balls out there. Forgive me for saying it that way. Um, he's, you know, we, we got to clean some stuff up, obviously. Um, but just throwing him in there in the heat of battle like that, um, how much zero that team did too, um, which you guys can see. You know, it was a big plan of theirs, and they had some good adjustments, taking away some of our hot throws. So we were going to change a lot of stuff on the fly. So um, putting a lot of pressure on him in that way, and um, I thought he did a hell of a job doing it. Um, didn't um, protected the ball well, didn't have any turnovers, and um, made some big plays too that I thought weren't there always. Brock Purdy in this economy, unbelievable that we are talking about the great Brock Purdy. But as Kyle Shanahan said, he did make some key throws, including one absolute perler, as we say in Australia, to uh, George Kittle over the middle, which was uh, one of the best throws of the week. I'm in a uh, two quarterback league right here. Here you go, Kyle Shanahan. This is, uh, you see it on the screen. Uh, Kyle Shannon told Peter King after the game that this was Brock Purdy's best throw, recognized the blitz, audibled, uh, audibled Kittle's route, got rid of the ball in 1.72 seconds, sixth fastest throw of the season, and it was a first down. And yep, so we're showing you the play right here. On Twitter, at Akash Anav, who is the best guy to follow, or among the best guys to follow if you are a Niners fan. He's a lot of good analytical information. Uh, loves his Niners, does Akash. Uh, right. Yeah, I think that with Kittle, where you're at, Matthew, in terms of Purdy affecting his value to start off, keep it open or close it out. And just a reminder, this is just for this week, whether you're continuing to start these guys or closing them out and putting them on your bench. I appreciate that. Thank you for it. Yes, that, that's exactly right. And uh, I'm keeping it open. Yes. He's George Kittle. Yes. Where, where else he going? What else he doing? What else he doing at tight end? You're keeping it open. Like, yeah, again, look, yeah. five different tight ends have scored 13 or more fantasy points against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It is not a defense that scares me for the tight end position. And also, like, there's all the cliches about inexperienced quarterback. What are you going to do? You're looking for your tight end. Like, what? He's George Kittle. Stop it. This shouldn't even be a question. Yeah, it, I'm mad at Brian Rubin for putting it in the rundown. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah it, it ain't no question, man. Especially when we talk about the, the tight end position here. It, it, it's Travis Kelsey. Mark Andrews, maybe somebody else right now, and then it's George Kittle, man. We talking about fantasy football playoffs, man. I'm keeping this open. <laughs> wow. Yeah, open. Well, well, yeah, Brian, yards, Rubin, Brian Rubin gets in my ear and to his defense, he's like 48 yards the last two games. Okay, that's fine. But by the way, that probably still means he was tight end six. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I mean, like, I'm just whatever. It, like, I get it. It has been it has been disappointing, but so maybe maybe getting away from Garoppolo into Brock Purdy changes George Kittle's fantasy out. Like anything. What, whatever. Look, I'm as tight end six this week. You're starting George Kittle. Don't get cute. For whatever it's worth, by the way, I'm in a, uh, I'm in a dynasty league, 12-team uh, dynasty league with a bunch of my old buddies over at ESPN. And uh, one of the playoffs, next week starts the playoffs, uh, or this week starts the playoffs. It's a two-quarterback league. And uh, Brock Purdy went for $55, fab. And we have a $100 budget. Went That's why you save the money for the end of the season, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm, the guy I'm playing, the guy I'm good at quarterback, um, and uh, he's had a bunch of injuries. So yeah, he had to he had to really spend his, I had to make sure he got them too to get um, <laughs> to get Brock Purdy. Unbelievable. That's right. All right. Now, there's no. I mean, it's a 12 team dynasty league. There's no quarterbacks. No one left. Like no one left. Okay. So. Lawrence, Amari Cooper, who uh, was one of those who <laughs> suffered from Deshaun Watson looking like the worst quarterback in the league against the Texans, assumed that Deshaun will get better. Yeah. What are you doing with Amari Cooper this week? Yeah, can, can I hedge on this? Because what's the weather going to be in Cincinnati? Because if it's cold, I don't want cold Amari Cooper, but I'm encouraged by the tar – he's still got the targets – Right, and we do expect Deshaun Watson to play better. That was his first game in like 18 years. Um, but assuming it's gonna be, you know, pretty cold. 47 degrees and over. Oh no, I'm keeping it open. <laughs> 47 degrees, I keep it open. Yeah, I'm okay. gonna keep it open as well. Reluctantly, Lawrence is absolutely right in terms of the target. He had a 41% target share with Deshaun Watson. Now, those targets were like. Uh, uh, oh, it's over there. <laughs> uh, it landed five feet in front of me. Uh, why are you throwing to that guy? Um, you know, on the other team, on the Texans. I, like, so, um, you know, not, our ta not all targets are created equal. Having said that, he's had nine or more targets in three straight games. We talked about the 41% target share, specifically with Deshaun Watson. He cooked the Bengals the last time he saw them. Five for 131 and a touchdown here. The game's on the road at Cincinnati. I get it. But um, I just, again, six teams on a bye. I'm at wide receiver 19 this week. 
and I'd probably hedge a little bit. Like, you know, he's a low-end wide receiver two for me, which, you know, when you think about his talent and a 41% target share, normally should be higher. So I'm, I'm hedging a little bit. But yes, for the premise of our segment, I'm keeping it open on Amari Cooper. If you have him, you're starting him. I have him in two leagues. I'm starting him in both. Yep. I think this is the most interesting game of the week in a way because Deshaun Watson, like the sample is so small and every time we see him play, we get so much more new information. If he's really bad again, because he was horrific against the Texans, he was short-arming throws that NFL quarterbacks just don't typically do. Like Davis Mills doesn't make those kind of passes. So he didn't look like a guy who was ready. Yeah, I don't know. Davis, hey, Davis, Davis Mills catching Davis Mills strays. strays. He's starting again. You know. Davis. You know you Davis Mills catching strays here from uh, no, James Davis, Davis Mills got Best Kyle Allen, so I feel like I'm uh, entitled to make those calls. <laughs> All right, Matthew, Juju Smith-Schuster. It's not been any good stretch for Juju. You keeping it open or closing it out? <sighs> <laughs> this is one where I want to hedge. Oh. I think ideally you're closing it out. Okay. I will tell you, I mean, I have it wide receiver 25. Again, six teams are on a bye. So, um, but look, Broncos give up the 12th fewest yards per game to the slot, right? The second fewest fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. The second fewest touchdowns to opposing wide receivers. Like, pick a stat. Denver's really good against opposing wide receivers. Yeah. And then you think about uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, who hasn't been great since he's come back after the concussion. Under 40 receiving yards in both games after the concussion. You see it there on your screen, what he did in the three games prior. Eight targets a game, seven receptions a game over 108 receiving yards a game. And then the two games since, he's getting under four targets a game, three receptions a game. He's averaging just 36 receiving yards, under seven fantasy points here. I don't know, a bad matchup, and we haven't seen the production there. It's Juju Smith-Schuster. We talked about this earlier, I think on Monday show, Jay, about the fact that Juju is sort of like Midwest Gabe Davis and Mike Williams. <laughs> you sort of have to just keep him out there every single week because it's, it's hard to tell with the Chiefs. You never know if you're on the field of Mahomes, great stuff can happen, but they also have eight other players yes. that he can make great stuff happen with. The problem, however, is, is that, as we talked about, with Williams and Gabe Davis, they're both bigger guys, they're both red zone threats. Those are guys that all they need is one play to pay off. And while that's true with any player playing with Mahomes, generally speaking, where Juju's had his fantasy value this year has been with volume, yep. yeah. right? And so we haven't seen the volume the last two weeks and against Denver, I get it, they're nine and a half point favorites, but you figure, so at nine and a half point favorites, do they run a lot in the second half? Is it a lot of Pacheco mm -hmm. and McKinnon in the second half? They don't need to throw a ton. I, I, I think know. the thing there is, as well is that when Mike Williams and Gabe Davis play well, they get like 30 fantasy points and you might just win your week off of that. When Juju Smith-Schuster plays well, it's like eight receptions for 90 yards, no yeah. touchdowns, and great. It's just slightly better. There have been a couple points. games where he had a touchdown, but right, it, his great games are like 18 to 20 points, not a 32-point sure. right. game, yep. something like that, which is what Williams and, uh, and what Gabe that, Davis what, can do. Well, that big play comes from what you said. They mix in a lot of guys. Uh, MVS, he, he's one of that's the big play guy for them. They're mixing him in there they're mixing in Justin Watson there and you go from the Bengals who are the seventh best against receivers and fancy to Denver who is the first best against receivers and fancy I'm closing it because I just don't feel and, and this is in a week where we need receivers so many buys but I'm closing it because of the matchup and and because like you said they're nine point favorites who knows how to uh how the game strip will go then so i'm gonna have to close it sorry juju holla at me next week okay lawrence what you about you think he really will you think juju will hey lawrence juju. yeah he will like hey he I, what's see, going he on he's gonna what's... see this and he gonna i'm gonna tweet something about it too he gonna okay he gonna quote tweet that all right all fair right. enough let's go to adam Thielen. future tiktok star lawrence jackson there you go <laughs> yeah we'll see if adam Thielen quote tweets anything he did nothing Last week against my New York Jets, he goes two for 27, comes down to earth after being rejuvenated against the Pats on Thanksgiving, open or closed on Thielen Lawrence. Man, listen, any other week I'll close it on Adam, old Adam Thielen, but I'm going to leave this open because of every fact, like, you just can't, you just don't look at what he's done this season because then it's going to make you, it's going to make you close it, right? But the Lions, the <laughs> The Lions have uh, the Lions are the sixth worst against receivers in fantasy. He's had one game over five receptions. See, I can't look at the screen right now because then I'm gonna close it. But he's going against the Lions here, right? And look, if it makes you feel any, even better, he only scored three touchdowns, not that part. But one of those touchdowns was against the Lions. Sure. So there you go. We got a 53 uh, over and un under right here, high flying. They're scoring. Both teams would be scoring, so I got to leave it open, man. 
I'm going to leave it open too. And, and just to talk a little, so somebody that might see this and go, wait a minute, Barry, you just closed it out on Juju and he's your wide receiver 25 and you're going to keep it open on Thielen because right. you're wide receiver 28. For me, it's about sort of like in, in a 12 team league where you might be starting Thielen. Like for me, it's about where they are comparatively on your team. Like they're different players, right? You know, and so I think Juju's probably started in more leagues. So, you know, in more shallow leagues. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, is that I'm keeping it open. If, does that make sense or did I not just really. battle? Yeah. I don't the, know idea is, is that, the idea is, is I'm judging them on their, their um, oh, what's the way to put it? Relative I, to? No, w r yeah, r on a bell curve, if that okay, makes any sense. Sure. I, I'm, I'm, I'm judging them based on, like, where they would be normally rostered and st potentially started, what kind of leagues. Okay. Juju's potentially, potentially started, like, in 10-team, two wide receiver leagues, you know what I mean? Okay, right. Adam, Thiel okay. Adam Thielen's more of an option for 12-team, three wide receiver leagues, is my point. And so, in a league in where Adam Thielen has been a viable option this year, I am keeping it open this year. Lawrence is absolutely right about this matchup. Lions give up the third most, uh, I'm sorry, the fifth most fantasy points per game to wide receivers, third most yards per game to wide receivers. You mentioned the great game against the Lions previously this year. And, and so, uh, the other crazy thing about this, and we talked about this yesterday, the Lions are favored in this game. Yes, The sir. Vikings are two-and-a-half-point yes, dogs. The 10-2 and two Vikings are two-and-a-half-point dogs to the Lions. And so, in theory, game script, look, the over-under is 52. We expect a lot of fantasy points to be yep. scored in this game. Obviously, Justin Jefferson is going to get his. But I do think Thielen, based on the matchup, because we've seen it. We haven't seen it a ton. But to me, it's too much. The matchup and the fact that they'll either be tied or trailing in this game yeah, I, I'm in on Thielen this week. Okay. Thielen's going to make the love list and others receiving votes. Okay. Just so you know. All right. Yes, little sir. heads up, little hit. Love okay. this, baby. Little teaser. Yeah, All right. Little... I don't think we need to spend too much time on this one, but Travis Etienne, open or close, it just has to be open, right? Yeah, he played 80%, 88% of the snaps last week. I get it. He's last two healthy game. He's been under 75 scrimmage yards, and you're facing the Titans, who have the second fewest rushing yards per game allowed to opposing running backs. So I get the question because it's a really good matchup, and he hasn't been great recently. But just the volume and the usage there, and the fact of the matter is, is because he's so viable in the passing game, mm -hmm. that to me, if he was, if this were old James Robinson, I'd be like, ah, eh, maybe not, because you're just running between the tackles. Yes. But they're they're so creative with how they use ETN and how they will use ETN in this game. I'm keeping it open on him. He's an RB2 for me this week. You bring up a lot of great points that I was actually going to use. There you go, Matthew. Thank Bear. you, Lauren Jackson. <laughs> You're welcome back on the show anytime you want. Hey, look. That's we how know. it's done, Jay Crowder. Yeah. You yeah. see? Yeah. We That's know. how it is. Yeah. Jackson. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we know that nobody can run against the Titans, but we also know if you want to beat the Titans, start throwing the ball against them. Uh, this is a running back, and great example, again, by using James Robinson, another Robinson, Brian Robinson. You wouldn't start these types of running backs versus Tennessee because they run it straight into the middle in the teeth of the defense. But ETN, you could get on the ball different kinds of ways, and if you have to throw the ball, he's still valuable in that aspect. So we leaving this over, man. He's the, he's the guy. This is easy for me. Yeah, Titan, also, Titan's favored in this game as well, so they'll be throwing. Also, yeah. important Jack to note be. that Trevor Lawrence is not practicing today with his foot. Uh, fortunately, he avoided serious injury. I thought when I saw that in real time, I thought it'd be 2024 before we saw Trevor Lawrence again, but he's escaped serious injury, but yeah. may not play this week. We have to wait and see. We wait and uh, see. C.J. Beathard would take the snaps for the, uh, for the Jaguars if he can't go. And it's not a terrible matchup against Tennessee, who's 29th against the pass yep. over the last month. I mean, again, you can't run on them, so you do have to throw their underdogs. The Jaguars are so game script should be positive there as well. If you're in a if you're if you're in a league where somebody spent 55 bucks on Brock Purdy, <laughs> yeah, CJ uh, CJ Beathard could potentially be an option if Lawrence can't go. Uh, it is only a Wednesday though. Yep, we'll see what happens there. All right. Lawrence, Jamal Williams against Minnesota. Looks like DeAndre Swift is reasserting himself in that backfield. Are you keeping it open or closing it out on Jamal Williams? I'm happy to be able to say that I'm going to close this one on Jamal Williams. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, and it's just relative to how, you know, Swift has come back into the fold. Now, we know Jamal Williams could score a touchdown and give you 12 fantasy points. But come on, man. Like, that, I don't want to sweat that out. Swift is now healthy, and it's clear by him getting 18 touches in Week 13, over 100, over 110 all-purpose yards, and the touchdown. That shows me that he's getting going, and the Lions are winning games now. 
So now this this matters right here, baby. So I'm 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 closing it because I'm happy for DeAndre Swift. Wow. That's it. No respect for the uh, the league leader and I don't want them He's twenty-two got more touchdowns than Nick Chubb and Deontay Johnson combined. Why don't you like touchdowns, Lawrence? Yeah. I do, but I need two. You know, if it's Jamal Williams, we need two, not just one. I need uh, two. I, I, have you seen the running backs you're going to be throwing <laughs> out there? Like, do you know how many running backs are out this week? I'm keeping it open. <laughs> it's a it's a brutal running back week. We've also got some injuries as well. And again, we just talked about this game. Yeah. It's fifty-two and a half is the line. Yep. We expect a lot of score. It's 52 and a half, and the Lions are freaking favored in this game. So in, we expect a lot of scoring to happen and a lot of scoring to happen on the Rams. And yeah. uh, I'm sorry, for the Lions, a lot of scoring to happen for the Lions. And if the Lions are scoring, who's got a good shot at getting one of those touchdowns? Jamal Williams. I don't get it either. But when they get in close, they like him. He's got more rushing touchdowns than Nick Chubb. Everybody. He's got more rushing yeah, touchdowns yeah. than everybody. Yeah. Like, you just saw that graphic, 14 rushing touchdowns. And so, you don't love this. But, again, the Vikings, who are, who, uh, the Vikings who are 19th against the run uh, over the last uh, month, and they're the 31st worst scoring defense. Only one team in the NFL is giving up more points in an NFL game than the Vikings over the last four weeks. And so, yeah, like, you know, anytime touchdown, Jamal Williams, that has paid off pretty much throughout the, throughout yeah. the year. I, yeah. I, I have been running back 27. I, if I'm starting a Lions running back and only one, it's going to be Swift. Right, right. But am I, if I've been rolling with him, am I going to roll with him again? Yeah, I'm keeping yeah. it open on Jamal Williams, Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. Right. come on, Lawrence. Right. Right. Well, you you take him 18 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> two okay, touchdowns. not two one, because if it's two, we all take <laughs> right, that. Right. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's close out, Matthew, by talking about – Miami's backfield, Jeff Wilson Jr. and friend of the show, Raheem Mostert, with a very favorable matchup against the Chargers. Keeping it open or closing it out on each of these guys? Keep, keeping it open. Last, I understand. Both? That I'm keeping it open on both. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because, look, so I have Jeff Wilson at 25 and Mostert, Mostert at 31. So I think that might be one question. Like, if I'm picking a Dolphins running back, which one? I still prefer Wilson to Mostert. I know that Wilson got no run last week. Yeah. And Mostert, um, Mostert got more. Um, but... Prior to last week, Jeff Wilson Jr. had scored in three straight games. Again, you can run on the Chargers. They give up the second most rushing yards per game to opposing running backs. Uh, they're third in terms of most rushing yards, period, over the last month as well. You see it on your screen right there. The Dolphins did not do well. Fins down last week. I think they know, Mike McDaniel knows, that if the Dolphins are going to do anything in the playoffs or down the stretch, they need to have a balanced offense. It can't all be on Tua and Tyreek. They need to reestablish this run game. The Chargers are the perfect defense to do it against. So again, Mostert is a you know is a low end flex for me, and Wilson is a is a flex. But yes, if you would normally start them, I would start them. I'm keeping it open on them. Yep, Lawrence. Wade yeah, on. I'm gonna keep this open and so open that we just gonna let the drinks flow on this one. I have no worries about Jeff Wilson last weekend. Like you, Matthew, I'm gonna have Jeff Wilson ranked a little higher. The Chargers, there's their last three games, the opposing team's leading rusher has had at least 105 rushing yards. The fourth game was 89 by Elijah Mitchell. So like you said, you can run on this team, and I feel confident that Jeff Wilson will hit the ground running, especially after that bad uh, week last week. So I'm keeping this one open as well. Yep. By the way, that game right here on NBC and Peacock. Yes, sir. That's the yes, Sunday sir. night football game. I'm a company man. Good job by you, Matthew. Yeah. yeah. It, you I, know what? It wouldn't. You know what? It wouldn't hurt you to. You know, yeah. kiss the company ass yeah. a little bit. You kiss, know, just kiss um, the peacock. It just. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Come here. NBC. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Come, Show a little love to NBC. Come here, peacock. Yeah. Come here, peacock. Yeah. Uh, I really want. This is my dream. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna put this out there in the universe. This is my dream. I gotta talk to. I gotta talk to Alexa. But um, what I really want is, you know, for my old back at ESPN, I used to have a puppet show. Yes. So I have a whole obsession with puppets. Yeah. And so I want. I want. I don't, well, I don't want to turn this all into a puppet show. Don't worry. We're not going to go into the puppets again. But I want one. Thank you. I want one. I want either. I want either want a peacocky puppet, or I want um, a guy in a peacock suit. Oh, but it's not the official NBC peacock. Like it's like it's the brother of the NBC peacock, right? right? <laughs> so he's like he's like he's just like off brand a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, and he's kind of a drunk. You know what I mean? He's like a drunk peacock. Yeah, go, go with that one. Yeah, exactly. Like so he's and he's bitter at his brother 
who's the NBC peacock. He's getting all the shine. He's getting all the shine right there. He's not that guy. Yeah. He's not that guy. He's like, you know, so he's just like a mess. Like his feathers aren't all great. You know what I mean? Like he's just the, the put upon <laughs> brother. That's that's my dream. And his name is Peacocky. All right, we're going to go to break. When we come back. Our interview with C.D. Lamb. Unfortunately, we didn't get to ask C.D. about the drunk peacocky brother. Next time, we'll ask C.D. Lamb about that. He can. C.D. Lamb. The definitive C.D. Lamb interview is coming up next. Seriously, tell me that's not. Do he sing and dance? You can already see the Saturday morning cartoon based on it. Sneaky little touchdown there from CD against yeah. the Colts. He had quite a game adjusting his chain before some big catches as well. He was number, the star of the show. Number 88 on the field, but number one in our hearts in terms of fantasy football. And we're always pleased when NFL players want to come uh, come hang out at the happy hour uh, and, you know, chop it up a little bit with us. Yep. CD Lamb reached out and said, hey, I'd love to talk with you guys. And we said, we're down. So now we, we taped this yesterday. This is the definitive C.D. Lamb interview. Very exciting day because we are joined by fantasy football royalty. He's carrying a number of fantasy teams, including three of mine. C.D. Lamb, Jay Croucher. Yes, C.D. Lamb joins us today, reminding you to try Old Spice Gentleman's Blend deodorants and body washes crafted to be gentle on skin with ridiculously long-lasting freshness. You can buy Old Spice Gentleman's Blends in stores now. CD, it's great to have you. I want to start off by asking you the tough questions. The first one being, how often do you adjust your chain before a snap? Uh, uh, not often, actually, because I never, I don't often have that problem with it just popping out my T-shirt. So, yeah, that was uh, it was quite a moment. Right. You know, I think it really accentuated the play. The fact that you were able to do that and then still break one right. was impressive. Well, and I also think, by the way, you guys were killing the Colts so bad. They're, tr- they're desperate for anything, uh, you know, to, uh, to talk about there because, you know, the game was so out of hand. CD, I'm, I'm curious, when fans come up to you, how often does fantasy football, you know, get mentioned to you or is in your life? When fans come up to you, are they like, hey, thank you so much for what you do for the Cowboys or thank you so much for what you do for my fantasy team? So much my fantasy team is not even, you know, thank they I don't even know at this point if they're fans of the Cowboys, but they should be. Um, I feel like in a situation to where, like, if you're watching the Cowboys, you got to be watching, you know, me, of course, but, like, how we orchestrate things and, you know, ultimately how we come out victorious. But when they come up to me, I for sure hear about fantasy teams. So, listen, uh, off of that, let me, let's, let's switch now from fantasy football. Do you play fantasy football? No, I don't take it serious. Honestly, I don't. But <laughs> I, I've drafted for sure. But I did. I don't like. I don't sub. I sub. I substitute every now and then. But I don't keep up with it. So, but you do play. You do have a team. Like you know. For sure. Oh, sure. oh that's, yeah. that's that's. Well, we need to get you a co-manager or something like that when you're busy. <laughs> you know. Um, so I have a question. Then when you, I understand you don't take it seriously, nor should you. You're you're focused on helping the Cowboys get to a Super Bowl. But uh, when you drafted, did you draft yourself? Thing is, no, I had a trade for myself. My brother drafted me before me. Like, that's, it was crazy. I what? imagine you don't have much leverage in that situation yeah. because they know that C.D. Lamb wants to trade yeah. for C.D. Lamb. Yeah, what was that negotiation like? Your when... own brother. Bro. Yeah, what was that negotiation like, negotiation like with your brother where you're like, yo, trade me to me? Right, right, right. So at first, uh, I ended up getting it out of him like, Yo, who are you gonna who who you drafting in the, you know in fantasy? Like I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna t- I'm like I asked him specific like position specific and he told me his receivers of course, and uh, he's like yeah I'm gonna get you I'm gonna go get Jamar Chase. And I'm like bro, <laughs> like what you're cheating like there's no way you're gonna get both of us because like at that point you win you know so uh, I ended up I ended up taking Jamar from him and he was actually kind of sick at me so. 
I, you know, I came up with a mutual agreement, trade me for Jamar, and that I did, and I got me. So I guess it worked out. Yeah, that, def <laughs> that definitely worked out. Jamar's obviously having a good season, though he's banged up a little bit. But yeah, listen, I agree with you. You know, you guys, in every fan, not just your own fantasy league draft uh, CD, you and Jamar were among the top wide receivers drafted in every fantasy league across the country. So no surprise that uh, you guys both went early in your own draft. Yeah. CD, this is your first year without Amari Cooper being opposite you. Uh, what's it like being, I guess now, like a true locked-in wide receiver one? What's that been like for your game? Uh, for sure different. You know, uh, I've, I've seen different aspects of the game. Uh, mentally, I've grown uh, for sure, mature, understood a lot, coverages a lot more, and understanding my role uh, is a lot bigger. So it's a lot of things that I have to take more critical and take a lot more serious and uh, provide for the team for sure. Whenever my number's called, I have to step up. It's no option. And um, – I feel like in a situation like that, I, I, I pop out the most, and um, I'm built for it. Now, the guy who is across from you in Amari's spot is Michael Gallup, who's coming off a significant injury. What are you seeing from Michael, and do you feel like he's back to 100%? Uh, not quite yet. Um, his his play is for sure improving, and, uh, and that speaks a lot about him. You know, uh, just to see the way he went up for that jump ball, uh, yesterday it was it was great to see or not yesterday when we played the Colts uh, it was great to see and um you know it, it reminded me of the MG my rookie year to my sophomore last year uh and that's where it get it, it gets scary um for him to jump out you know jump out the gym and to have the body control that he does uh and his hands are are, are I feel like are underrated you know and um for him to pop out the way he does I love I love that for us because then I mean we're clicking on all cylinders there's no question you guys are clicking on all cylinders. That was an unbelievably impressive performance the other night. Uh, but listen, every team can always get better. And your owner, Jerry Jones, has made no secret about the fact that he's very interested in Odell Beckham Jr. So I'm curious. I know he's he's been visiting teams, everything like that. Have, have you tried to recruit OBJ? Have you texted him? Have you said, hey, come join what we're doing here? How's that going? Most definitely. Um, I shot him a couple of texts. You know, uh, just reaching out for him, um, just seeing, just seeing where his head at. And I'm trying to get a get get the scoop of where he where he leaning towards. But uh, I feel like my fans are doing a great job of just making them feel, you know, well at home. As you seen at the game last last night, it was a huge moment. Um, they were chanting OBJ. Uh, kind of he can he can see the love, you know, that's here and um, that we have for him. So looking forward to seeing his final decision. Yeah, that would make Dallas a pretty unfair team. Yeah, they had, be uh, ridiculous. Odell Beckham. Yeah. Uh, CD, you guys won the division last year, home playoff game. You were a Super Bowl contender. This year, looking like a Super Bowl contender again. What's the difference between this year's team and last year's? Uh, we're not really worried about the noise. And, and by that, I mean understanding we know what we have in this room and we know what we can do as a team. Uh, it's all about going and do it, taking it one week at a time and being, being about it rather than just thinking about it and understanding that it's actually in front of us, we just got to go take it. Yeah, there's no question about that, CD. I'm curious. Listen, you've done such a good job. I, I think the Cowboys especially, as Jay mentioned, you uh, in your first year without Amari Cooper, more defensive attention on you and, you know, teams trying to bracket you and, and double team you. I think the Cowboys do a good job of moving you uh, all over the field and figuring that out. But I'm curious um, – when you, and I know you have respect for everyone, but what corner that lines up against you scares you the most? When you're like, when you know, like, I got to bring my A game. Who's, who's the defender out there that uh, I guess you have the most respect for? Uh, yeah, I'm glad you said that because you said scare Alice. <laughs> yeah, I know you're not scared. I know you're not scared. I guess just, listen, but, uh, you, always, you always try hard, but I'm just like, what's the defender you have the most respect for that you know, like, hey, I'm going to, this is going to be a battle? For sure. Uh, Slay, you got to love what he's been doing, you know, this year. He's been battling. Of course, the the DB receiver, I mean, the DBs from um, the Eagles, Slay and James, Bradbury, that is. And then uh, you got to love the matchup against Jalen Ramsey, of course. Marshawn Ladder. I mean, it's a list of guys. Honestly, it's just, just good on good. Do you find that with the attention that the ground game is getting because it's been so good that you're getting more open? Most definitely. Uh, Got to give credit when credit's due. Uh, the guys up front, 
they 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 go in weekend, play in and play out, uh, if you will, battling um, hard, whether it's pass protect or run protect um, or run blocking. It's just we all we all bought in on whatever it is. If it's pass protection, we're all bought in. If it's run, if we got a block for whoever is, you know, running the ball, whether it's TP or Zeke. Um, I'm trying to get them boys in the end zone. And uh, as you said, Zeke has been – I mean, uh, TP has been doing a great job of just, you know, finding the end zone and doing everything that he has to get as many yards as possible. And a lot, and obviously with Zeke, what he's been doing, he's your, he's your bruiser. You know, um, he's going to keep hurting you, keep hurting you. And he's going to find the end zone, of course. And uh, that's just part of it. You kind of get tired of it. And then on the back end, you got me and MG uh, looking around behind whoever. So just understanding that we can hit you from different – different aspects for sure. And um, offensively, I feel like we're, we're, we're finding our group. As you know, a lot of fantasy football managers have you on their team. You're the number one. When, when somebody drafts you on their team, you've been going in the first round. So people draft you early. And so as a result, a lot of times they name their fantasy team after you. So what I wanted to do was run by, I think some are good, some aren't bad, but I, we would love to get the definitive answer from you CD, I'm going to read you a list of fantasy football team names inspired by you, and you just give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. Are these CD Lamb approved or not? For sure. All right. Lamb Chops. Oh, that's a dub. All right. There you go. La La Lamb. <laughs> that's smooth. A, B, C, D. You can't miss. Yeah. Very creative with that. The Battering Lambs. Ah, they lost me. All right, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. CD phone home. <laughs> no. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Silence of the lamb. Duh. Yeah, All that's right. Good. That's good. And uh, now you CD, now you don't. That's a dub. Yeah, <laughs> that one's my favorite Duh. too. Unbelievable. They're real creative, real creative. Yeah, yeah. well, listen, uh, again, CD, congratulations on a great season. You're having a monster year, not only for the Cowboys, but also for fantasy football managers across the country. We appreciate you, and thank you to Old Spice for making you available to us for a, uh, a couple of minutes here. We wish you tremendous luck for the rest of the season. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. There All you right. go. The definitive CD Lamb interview. Really like the definitive. He doesn't need to do any more interviews. We have, we have nailed the essence of CD right. Lamb right yes. there. CD Lamb, he's done. Austin Eckler done. Raheem Mostert, Stefan Diggs. The definitive interviews have definitive been done. Definitive interviews. Those guys 100%. can focus any on other, football. I mean, Austin Eckler is out there in every other pot, but it's just like, I don't know why, because yeah, we it's had good. the definitive interview here. Hello. Yeah. All right. But, but let's anyway. talk about the Cowboys, and thanks again to CD Lamb. He was awesome, time. by so the way. Just, right. I mean, yeah. like, right, right. you never know what you're going to get with – I'll just say this. You never know what you're going to get with NFL players, like, you know, in terms of <laughs> right. how engaged will they be. Some players don't like fantasy football. You know, they roll their eyes. They've got to do yeah. it, that kind of stuff. I thought he was great. Yeah, I thought he sure. was really engaged, and he was awesome. He was. And his team – Not surprised – not surprising. Like, he's a, as good as he is on the field. He's also good in an interview. This is a guy that has tremendous talent up and down the field. Yes, and speaking of tremendous talent, the Dallas Cowboys are rolling at the moment after they embarrassed Indianapolis by 35 points somehow, even though they're up two points late in the third quarter. And they play the Houston Texans, who are not very good. And the Cowboys are minus 17-point favorites, Oof. Lawrence. The total is 45 and a half. This is going to be ugly. But to me, the most interesting thing about this from a fantasy perspective is, Matthew, you got Dak Prescott outside your top 10 quarterbacks. I do. You know, I mean, again... So, first off, news before the show, we sort of referenced it last segment, but uh, Davis Mills returning to the starting quarterback job, sure. Kyle Allen benched. But um, So, a couple of things here. You sort of think about how this game plays out. First off, the Texans are brutal run defense. We know this, right? So, I, it's a, I think it's going to be a big Zeke game, yes, a big Tony Pollard yep. game. They also they have such a good defense, the Dallas Cowboys do. And now you've got Davis Mills. Whether it's Davis Mills or Kyle yeah, Allen, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Exp- <laughs> I, like, would anyone be shocked by a pick six or, you know, a fumble deep in their territory? I just don't think Dak Prescott's going to need to throw that much. He might have three touchdown passes, but like 175 yards in this one. or one yeah. fi- like, And he may not play the fourth quarter. He may not play the third. I, don't, I mean, there's 17-point favorites here. So I just, I think in terms of game script here, this is one of the reasons why, so my bet last week, when, uh, for the BetMGM breakdown on Football Night in America because we had the Cowboys-Colts on Sunday night. 
as I said, I took the over on one and a half passing touchdowns for Dak Prescott, right. but I took the under on 244 passing yards, and both ended up hitting. And the reason is, is because I think the game script for the Colts ended up playing out how I thought it would, and I think it's a very similar situation here with a Texans team that's worse than the Colts, which is that their defense is going to put the Cowboys in very good position. There's potentially a defensive score or two here. They can be able to run at will here, and so I just don't think Dak needs to put up big numbers. Remember, there's only one game this year where he's thrown the ball over 30 times. He threw it exactly 30 against the Colts, and every game other than one, he's been under 31 pass attempts. So I just... I just don't think volume's going to be there because it's not needed. To, to your point, real quick, I actually said this on a, a Roto World football show yesterday. I think Zeke could have a game sort of like something like 27 carries, 112 yards, two touchdowns. Like yeah. that type of game could happen for Ezekiel Elliott because Dak can't, he might end up throwing 175 yards, two touchdowns, which is solid. And I can see why you got him at a quarterback eleven. That'll fall right in there. Feed yeah. Zeke. Yeah, you just. I mean, it just. You know, they're just. They, we don't expect the volume to be there. But they're getting close. And he gets a, a cheap one or two. You're still. But that's why. You know, in a game that you think like, oh, this is a massive matchup, and it's just like, yes, it's a great matchup. But I actually think there won't be a t- like. I'd rather. I, this is insane. But I'd rather start Jared Goff this week. Oh so, yeah. Than oh, yeah, Dak Prescott. Sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, just because. That game's going to be a shootout. Yep. Yeah, you know, I, think. I, I think there's a uh, there's a better than average chance Kirk Cousins outscores Dak Prescott, even though Dak Prescott's a much better NFL quarterback. Yeah, to carry over from the last segment, I think you're still keeping it open on Dak Prescott just because he only might he might only need three quarters to put up three touchdowns and provide yeah. fantasy value. But yeah, he's not an elite option this week. All right, we're going to break. When we come back, we're going to talk Sunday Night Football, talk about whether the Los Angeles Chargers yeah. can still make the playoffs. By the way, with the Texans, no change from. Kyle Allen to David Stone. No. So it is what it is. No. <laughs> Nico Collins is a wide receiver four. season is here and the NBC Sports Predictor app is giving you a shot at winning $100,000 by entering Sunday Night 7's free contest between the Dolphins and Chargers. So if you don't have the NBC Sports Predictor app, Matthew, Lawrence, go download it now. All right, we're going to talk. Unless you don't want a shot at a free $100,000. There are some people out there who hate money. Yes. They're like, no, no, I want to live a, I want to live, you know, a life off the grid. I don't want to be possessed by material things. Yes. That ain't me. This isn't for you if you're one of those people. (laughs) No. But if you would like $100,000, then for potentially free, then this is probably for you. Yes, and we're going to help you answer some of those questions to win $100,000. Lawrence. To attack of Iloa, your guy, his passing yards bands, what do you got? Yes, sir. Since returning from the concussion, he has averaged 304 passing yards per game. So I'm going to go with the 295 to 314 and a win. There you go. All right. Matthew, Austin Eckler, your man. Yeah, you did the, the podcast. You, we did the definitive interview with Austin the de- Eckler. The definitive. His total yards, what have you got? Yeah, listen, no one knows Austin Eckler better than me. You know? <laughs> Because of the definitive interview, I really got in there, got into his psyche and his soul, his dreams, <laughs> yes. his hopes, Shades his Frost aspirations. Yeah. Absolutely. Very, yes. <laughs> yeah. Frost Nixon, Barry Eckler, very similar. <laughs> very, very similar. Look, this is a guy's averaging about 86 scrimmage yards over his last four games. Dolphins give up the 10 most receiving yards per game. We don't know about Mike Williams. We know they're going to be uh, uh, Kyle Allen there. I think they're going to have to throw a little bit more. Give me the 95 to 104 option right there that's where he's going to hit he's going to between 95 and 104. okay total points in the game this is my one the bands range from 43 or less up to 64 plus i'm uh i'm gonna go 64 plus why not let's take the big band he's gonna be hugely high scoring Chargers not gonna be able to stop the dolphins and i think the Chargers they can play from behind and put up numbers as well so we're gonna have a good game on sunday night football okay lawrence would you back the Los Angeles Chargers to make the playoffs at plus 140. It means they're about a 42, 43% chance to make the playoffs. You think they're making the playoffs? Hell no, nah, that's why, right? <laughs> this game right here, they have to win this game. Sure. Like, like, they won't mathematically be out, but 
they have to get this gauge. Tua, Herbert, I'm saying, nah, man, they pretenders to me. Yeah, the only thing with the Chargers is their schedule after the Dolphins. Home to Titans, at Colts, home to Rams, Baker Mayfield show, at the Broncos. That so that's bad. an easy schedule. Yeah. But if they lose this, you got a six and seven. It's not looking too good. What do you think about the Chargers? It's not here? looking too good. Um, you know, and and certainly the, uh, the 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 you know I do think the Jets make the playoffs here. Yes. So we'll yes. So, that's that's the other thing too. Is like I I sort of believe I believe in the Jets, and so you're like sort of like okay, well if they make the playoffs, right. who doesn't on yeah. that list? Patriots still in the mix. Raiders still in the mix, fighting with yeah, the Chargers. Yeah, it does. There wasn't yeah. anyone on that list that I feel like oh that's where they're gonna. That's the team that's going to falter. Yep. Like, you know, like, listen, yep. maybe if the Chargers wore Mighty Ducks jerseys, then maybe I'd buy in. <laughs> maybe if they had Mike but White instead of Justin Herbert. Maybe if they had Mike White instead of Justin Herbert. Yeah. Maybe they should make that trade. Well, Herbert's going to be a free agent in the offseason, so maybe they can, you know, release Herbert and go after Mike White. We'll see if that actually happens. All right, listen, it's closing time, which means you don't have to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. For Lawrence Jackson at Lord Don't Lose and Jake Croucher, I'm Matthew Berry. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotoworld, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.